<clears throat> okay, so here we go for the VWT4 sliding door sill. So this is just a before, well, not quite a before video. But some of you may have already noticed that is it's already been cut here. So there is currently no rubber door seal. Normally the rubber door seal would come down here following this line. It would come along here and it'd be here, along here. And then I've already cut this off a few weeks ago. It was hanging off anyway. It literally, it just, it was just breaking off. So I've just cut it off, just get out of the way. Um, so the plan for this is to, this area needs cutting open. So the area inside there can be treated. Um, I'm going to do the same with this area here. You can actually see straight through to the floor because not only is that layer gone all of the is this is where the petrol filler cap is i think water goes down here and it rots all of this away just get a torch all of this is just rotten so it's, there's a rot hole there and obviously here And then the, all, the whole underneath of the runner area is all rotten off. So this is, this is what the door sits on. Now previously, about four years ago, I repaired this track by making this piece of steel and sitting it on top. And then you can see where I just, I just spot welded it in. Um, but the actual metal that this is sat on is now completely rotten. So this has got very, very little support. So it's only a matter of time before the whole door just literally falls off. So all of this needs reconstructing. And then the bit where the rubber goes on, that needs reconstructing. So it's a mammoth job and it's the last major job that I need to do for body work on this van. Um, the door's done that was all done in one of my previous videos you can have a check out my other video on how i went about replacing this exterior panel and how i reconstructed all of the full length of the interior as well <clears throat> so first thing to do i'm going to grind all of this back with a flap disc to reveal the spot welds there's going to be roughly about 20 spot welds along here here and then i think there's two on top one of them one in there then two on top and that's what holds this on my idea is to keep the step in situ try and remove the runner section if i can off the underneath i'm gonna to have to do some cutting here and some cutting there see if i can get it off in one piece as much as possible make a new one then weld it back up in place so let's get started with cleaning this up don't forget your mask and goggles also ear defenders if you can get some do you have them just being lazy if not got them on I'll show you where we're up to so this is what we're looking for you can just about make them out i'm pretty sure the trick the trick to this is grind it until you just start to reveal it if you go too far, you're gonna sort of scuff it that much. You're gonna lose sight of where the weld is. You can just about make out like half a semicircle on some of them. So you can sort of like guess where the weld's gonna be. So I've got a tool I've picked up today from Machine Map, which I'll uh, show you in just a second. And what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use it to drill out right on top of these spot welds, um, basically separating this top sill, the step, the, the step from this section under here. It's gonna take a bit of time because I'm not gonna find them all first time, I know that for sure. But I'm gonna go through it, start removing those ones that I can see so far. So this is the tool. So I think you get basically Two, you get two drills in the box. This is an eight mil bit, and the big difference between this and a normal drill bit is the angle 
here crucially so you can see as, as soon as that cuts through you've only drilled sort of a millimeter or so into the material behind it so it means that you can drill out one layer without going too far into the one behind it so that's that and then basically the same thing again but larger i think this is possibly a 12 mil i think um so i think with this you have to gonna have to drill a pilot through probably like a two or three mil hole all the way through and then use that to cut cut through the the weld again separating so you can end up with a 12 mil hole on the top one and a two or three mil hole on the one behind it so it means that you can still weld um to you've still got something to work with on your on your other panel and these are dual sided so when one burns out you flip it around and you've got another one and then you get one two three four five you get six bits six and then so you get the double size you get 12. Uh, i think the kit was about 25 quid so no idea if that's a good price or not i literally saw it as like what brilliant idea that is so we'll give this a go only takes a few seconds to do and I'm just trying to gauge the the depth to drill to by the thickness of the, the metal which is of course it's only like a, a mill and a half something like that so I'm just doing the ones I can see so far looking for a s slight in the indi indication that there's one there and then going for it. So I've pretty much guessed some of them. Most of them I got to see an indication. I was expecting to see two and one, two and one. But that just doesn't seem to be the case with mine. So that's what I've gone with. At least it's sort of like consistent where I could see one on each top and bottom. And then I just saw a bit of something here and it does curve in there. So I've gone for that. And I've just kept it straight to there. There is more. The runner does go further back, but you can't get to it from here. So what I'm going to do is uh, get the panel put some axle stands, just so I can get a little bit better of access from the uh, the back of it now. So I've put the van up on a pair of axle stands there, and there, and then I've also got some of these uh, ramps that I haven't made any use of whatsoever ever so far so i thought i may as well wedge those under the wheels as well in opposite directions just in case something goes uh, as a backup so i'll put it on the the chassis there and on the jacking point there at the front so it gives me a lot more room now so this is the area you can't see it just quite the minute because there's so much like gunk and stuff filler and underbody seal but where this goes up it goes up and then it bends out to create like a flange where that has been welded through that way so i'm going to clean all this up now and then hopefully maybe get a, a putty knife and a hammer and get behind here and separate this piece off now now that those welds are hopefully gone and then i'll work on trying to separate this area here and towards the back this area here you can see also there where it's all rotten through and things so this all needs sorting out here <laughs> and that daylight is from here so water must spray up off the back wheel and things into into here and rot all this out. Rubbish. It's such a pain wearing goggles and a mask because it just steams up constantly. You can't see what you're doing. 
show what we're trying to do here now so this is the area we're trying to clean up i set myself up with a little flood light here it makes things a hell of a lot easier so if i can clean up this underneath this following this line now and get all this sealer off i should be able to see all these welds and get a putty knife behind this and prise this down or try and drop this whole thing off the underneath and i can refabricate any one of these put it back up and then weld it from above that's the diesel tank so any welding i'm doing around here i need to be really careful of so my plan is to uh, put up some uh, wooden sheets and kind of basically box off the whole tank and shield it from any heat from when i'm doing any welding here later especially this this area here where the all of the external bodywork needs repairing and the underneath here well let's get all this clean back so i've just been using a combination of a hammer and chisel and the wire wheel to clean this back and uh, you can see now it starts to reveal the wells from underneath as well so I don't want to be drilling these out, I want to try and keep this intact because I want to do all my welding from above as much as possible. So, but it does give you a good idea of a reference point so you can look at where the weld is under here and have a comparison to the above and see how, say like that one is there. So I know that I've got that one. So I'm going to try having a go at this now and see if I can prise this back. It isn't for budging at all. I've just tried it from here. I don't want to destroy this, but there's absolutely no way a putty knife will even go in there. So I suspect there are welds here as well on the bottoms in the middle of that rail here like this. So I'm gonna go along now and try and spot and uh, drill out these here and see what see what starts to happen to this rail. So it's proving to be easier to uh, get these wells to separate all from this side, rather than trying to do it from from back there. Now that I've got one started there, I'll just show what it's like. So get it in there, and then when it breaks you get this satisfying little click and as it it pops up so I'll just try it there you go. you can see it starts to lift separates you can pull it out and then just tap that back flat again move on i have now pretty much separated all of that area from here to here so now i think i've got the tricky parts to do which is this area from the end which i don't know how it is held on to about here so being as though i need to repair all of this and this i'm now going to head about cutting this section off and cutting this off which is gonna give me access to inside there, make things hopefully easier. So hopefully I sort of like kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Looks like I've got some gardening to do, and I'm sure that every uh, gram of weight loss is uh, an extra bit of brake horsepower. 
not science. Right, we'll do the same with this side. I've already had the hoover in there a little bit, but I'm gonna get the grinder on that now. So, that's a couple of slices put in. I'm gonna keep hold of these parts just for now, just as a, a reference. It's good to take pictures and videos like this. And you can refer back to them afterwards but if you keep that set it to one side when it comes to refabricating a new part later i can have a look at this in the in the garage and get that bend right and stuff rather than keep coming out here every time just get it something to like like that first so we'll keep that for now the inside is looking just as grotty as the other side so give that a clean out kind of scraped after a bit of a scraping and a hoovering i've got an idea now what's up against me for sorting that out and then i've just noticed here so i did have a bit of trouble getting this to separate and i've just noticed that you can just sort of see the circle starting to appear there and that's been caused by trying to separate these two pieces and it's pulled on that weld which has revealed the weld so I'm gonna go and drill that out and hopefully I'll find this all sort of loosens up here now. So I'll drill that out. Okay, so we're on to the next day now. So yesterday, I spent probably about three hours-ish to get this far, <clears throat> drilling this out, cutting the holes and general stuff that you've seen so far so um what i just wanted to quickly show you is originally i thought that i was expecting like i said two and one two and one and you can actually see here now that it is actually two and one two and one like that so that's the pattern that you need to look for to help find those welds i don't know if there's going to be a few more just yet i expect there will be but i can start now to see inside these two areas um what i've got to do now is get the door off now i do this all by myself so i'll set the camera up over here and i'll show you how i go about doing this uh, the first thing that i do is um i've taken the plastic bracket part off from here and then just bent that back and that allows this runner just to slide straight off then I just take out these two bolts here and here um, and then just basically drop it down and out slide it off the back um, and then when it comes to putting it back on again I have a this large water bottle here which should just lie on the floor and I basically just rest the whole the, the door on there in fact it's probably not gonna work now actually that I'd have to get something bigger because the door's sitting so much higher so basically just have something like that normal, uh, normally, uh, where you rest that side of the door on something and then it, it, it takes the weight of the door on that side so you can see what you're doing to hook it back in and then come work your way around here, holding the underneath the door and sit it back on the bracket, put in your top roller back in the channel and pop your bolts in. It's not too bad once you've done it one or two times, you get really quick. I can take this off in one minute and put it back on in one minute. Okay, so to take the door off, you just <clears throat> remove the two 13mm bolts with the socket set. Make sure you've got your hand underneath the door to take the weight. You don't want it suddenly dropping. As soon as those two bolts have come out, you're just going to lower the door down slightly just so that the top runner will come out from the top track. Keep your hands on it 
and then just sort of hinge it away, slide it backwards and it'll come off the track at the back. So the next thing to do now is to remove this bracket that sits inside the track and the bracket's there to retain the door in a fully open position. So the first thing to do is going to be to get some WD-40 on those threads, get it on above and below. And then the head of the screw is a very large one. In my socket set, it was a, a number four. That might not translate to anything that you have in your set. And then just using a socket set with an extension bar and a ratchet. Just get plenty of weight. Take it easy. You don't want to mash the head of that screw up, uh, the screw. Then just undo it. Now with this one, it was pretty rusted in so for extra precaution on this one I just got a wire brush uh, gave it a, a brush and I got a screwdriver in the in the head of the screw there and just scraped out any bits of grit and dirt just so that the screwdriver bit could thoroughly seat properly into the head of the screw give it a bit more oil give it another brush with some um, the wire will then tapping it. So if you shock a bolt first, that tends to loosen it up. It just increases your chances, plenty of weight on it. And then there we go, it's undone. So both screws went with quite a crack. So it looks like the uh, the runner comes down here and clicks behind that. But it looks like it's in good condition, so I'll just clean that up and that can go back in again afterwards. Yeah, the runner. Okay, so we need to do a little bit of forward thinking. This is the part that I've managed to get from just campers it's the part where the rubber door seal sits on and the really annoying thing is you cannot seem to buy these parts for this side of the van so if you've got a right hand drive and you've got a sliding door on the passenger side you can't get parts for them i've looked other people have looked um it's really infuriating you get all of the parts for the other side you can't get them for here but what you can get is one of these and then cut it and modify it so what i found is originally so petrol caps here this part that i've already cut off this was on here like this so you can see how it's completely the opposite way around as it, as it should go on the van you can't just flip it around because it's a mirror image. But I found that if I cut this off, I can use this piece to go in there like that. Then as far as I can tell, the curve here and here is the same. So what I'm gonna do is slice this off in that uh, bend. Then I'm gonna slice down here I'm gonna put that into there mold that into that bit and then the same on this side so I'm gonna offer this piece up try and get a line up drawn in here then cut this out and then that can go in its place so once I've done that that then gives me <sighs> a good indication then of working back towards this surface so the other thing to note with this is it really confused the hell out of me not only is it obviously the wrong way, wrong way around i already knew that when i was comparing it to what was on the van before it all fell to pieces i could not get my head around where the hell the rubber seal went and i've sussed it for some reason they make and ship this part with extra material on it which you need to cut off and the way you need to cut it is is down that line there so you have to cut it lengthways down the full piece all the way from one end to the other 
and get rid of that lip just leaving a bit of a basically a thing like that which your rubber seal goes over weird don't know why they do it but maybe it's a manufacturing some kind of processing method that you have to use so i'm going to cut this down i want to cut this off cut this off cut this off from there okay so what i've done first is i've drilled about every so far along the full length of the bottom sort of like a six mil hole which i'm using just to screw the piece to this block of wood at the minute just to hold it in place whilst i grind it and then it'll be for all of the plug welding that i'll be doing afterwards when i weld this piece to another piece that i need to fabricate later on That's the kind of profile that you need to cut off. Just to leave this bit of a lip here for that seal to go over. Now this piece here has been replaced in the past. You can see this is sort of fresh metal from the back and some welding and stuff that's been happened in the past by the previous owner owners. But you can see now that I've now that I've cut this, it's starting to make more sense now how this is this piece here. And it's going to have to go in there like that. So I need to line up as best as I can with knowing that this sits, it should actually sit just inside a lip. There should be a lip that it sits in. I don't know if that lip's still going to be there or not. But I need to sort of line it up something like that. So this line here carries on down here as best I can and then try and get a line it's quite hard to do but if I try and get a line uh, in fact do you know what that's not right because if I cut back there that's going to sit in there and then that's still going to sat way out so my cut actually needs to be frustratingly right here, which is right in the middle of all this crap. I might have to do some hammering of this first. If I try and get that sort of changed to that shape first, then I can cut that crap out and put that in its place. So I've been working on it for about an hour or so. And you can see now we've made good progress. I literally just cut through this through all of the rotten bit first because we just want to concentrate on getting this off um, I did need to do a little bit of cutting um, through some joints here I don't know if that's original or if it's this bracket here that someone's put on before I suspect it's that now um, it's all the way off until here and now there's this area inside here. So this bit is sort of above here. And now I need to get these joints off here. So it's loose to about here. And then I think there's some plug welds going on around here. And then it looks like there's like possibly a pair of rivets that hold this so the steel should come down here by the looks of things in and down and it looks like this piece here goes up against it and then like a pair of some sort of like bolt fixings or something go on to hold it maybe i don't know it looks like it because i see a a rusted up head of something whether that's original or whether that's somebody else's work i don't know it's too far gone you can see where this has been welded up in the past not by myself you can see my piece of steel there also that i made when i first had problems with this i lay it on top 
just made a cardboard template of this curve, the full length, and I made it out of one or well, two pieces of steel which are jointed somewhere around here and then just tacked it in place down like that as much as I could and that really made a massive difference but you can see see, see that groove there that the wheel was going through so that made a big difference but now obviously all of this that holds it's gone so I'm going to carry on trying to work out how to get this piece off I'm going to get the finger sander um, in here now and clean this area up which we'll need doing anyway and it'll hopefully reveal where some of the plug welds are if there are some that's the finger sander that i've got from screw fix not so long ago so it's just the the second the first the first proper time really that i'm trying it out i'm going to use to clean out this area so I'm get in there with it thanks to a uh, neil here in uh, scotland who uh I'd seen using one of these and he used it for this very same thing. It's pretty good really. See so it takes it down to the bare metal pretty quick. So we'll have a crack at that. And also I, I found that um, Machine Mart do the replacement belts. Um, they work out like a pound each. So let's give it a go and see how long these last. Okay, so that's how it's starting to look now. It isn't obvious how those two pieces have been joined together. So there's a this metal, this piece here that's the part that I need to try and get off down that way I need to separate it off here I can't imagine how they've I don't know how they've done this I can only imagine that it's been welded from underneath it's the underneath here so that's the area that I need to get off so I'm going to clean this back because I want to try and keep this intact as much as possible because I don't want to destroy this so I'm going to this is going to get replaced, so I'm going to clean this up and then see if I can find some welds and then drill those welds out from underneath this time and hopefully separate this bit and this I'm just going to cut through. Okie dokie, right, I've spotted something. So after cleaning that now, you can just, there you go, plug welds. So inside, where are we looking? Inside there, so we've got that step. Then you've got a plate inside there, which is this, which is attached to this, and then this is attached to that plate. And I think there are three plugs. One, two, three. So I'm gonna drill those little buggers off. And maybe there might be an extra one. We'll see what happens then. Well, that was an absolute right pig. I wish there'd been a video like this for me to watch so I could learn from where er other areas you need to drill. So you in a second. That's it, it's out. Uh, it's a bit of a mangled mess now because I've battled with that to get that out. It turned out there was two spot welds here. So I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll scan across now. And I'll show you all the ones I found. So you've got two here, then another pair, single, then you've got double, single, double, single, like that. Work your way along. There's your last one there. Now this one had been previously repaired so there was additional bits I had to cut through but that has now got that runner off and I need to repair all of that on the underneath and I'm going to sort of try and do this logically now working my way 
backwards. So I'll start with the stuff that I won't be able to get to, you know, first, if there's something else in the way. So this will probably be the very last bit that goes in. So I need to refab all that and reuse this rail and this, which is all gonna get cleaned up. And I need to remake this box section and the piece that would normally come, where is it now? Down here, round here, and then back down again, which will go against that surface there. See those plug welds there that I did earlier? That's took probably about five hours to get that off. 